In the forgotten corners of rivers, in the murky silence of earth-darkened streams, there lies a secret so old it's practically a whisper from the gold itself. This isn't about expensive gear or heavy machinery. No, what you're about to hear is a muddy, unrefined, back-to-nature trick that has led more people to gold than most modern technology ever could. But here's the catch. You have to get dirty, very dirty, when seasoned gold hunters speak in hushed tones around a campfire, when their stories shift from general advice to something more personal, more secretive, this is what they speak of. A method where your hands are your only tools and your senses become your map. Because sometimes gold doesn't glitter in the sun, it hides in the mud. Start with the floodplains. These low-lying, often overlooked stretches of land are like nature's collection bowls. After every storm, after every river surge, sediment settles in a pattern that only those who understand the language of mud can interpret. The trick is not just to look, but to feel. Kneel down. Let your hands plunge deep into the silt and sand. You're looking for density, not shine. Gold, being one of the heaviest elements, doesn't travel far. It settles low, buried beneath lighter materials. This is where the muddy trick begins. Swirl the sediment gently in your palm. If you feel something unusually heavy, even without seeing it, don't ignore it. That weight could be your first whisper of treasure. But the real technique is in the motion. Experienced prospectors know that the way you swirl mud mimics centuries of natural erosion. As your palm rotates, lighter particles lift away, dust, mica, fragments of organic material, until only the dense remains cling to your skin. It's in this residue that flakes of gold often reside, waiting for an eye sharp enough to catch them. This method has origins in ancient times, even before pans were used. Indigenous tribes across continents knew that rivers whispered secrets in their mud. They would dig just beneath the waterline, where the current slowed and sediment naturally settled. It's a matter of physics, yes, but also instinct. Not every muddy patch holds gold, but those near quartz outcroppings, iron-stained rocks, or where black sand begins to appear. That's your green light. You'll often notice a strange slickness in the mud, a thick, oily drag against your fingers. That's magnetite, a cousin to gold in the geological family tree. Where there's magnetite, gold is rarely far behind. Then comes the test. Once you've swirled and cleared enough sediment, look closely, squint if you must, you're not hunting for shine, you're hunting for resistance. Flakes that stay down when you pour water away. Specks that don't move even when nudged, that's gold. Some of the richest finds in history came from this method. Men who were laughed at for wading knee-deep in swamps emerged with pockets lined with gold dust. Because they listened. They understood that gold, like truth, often hides in the mess. And here's a rarely shared tip. Use a small black cloth to dump your muddy swirl onto. Gold stands out against black, far more than in a pan or against the bare earth. This trick isn't in the textbooks, it's in the whispered legends. To increase your odds, go just after a heavy rain. That's when the earth is stirred, secrets are displaced, and the rivers reset their gold traps. You'll often find fresh flakes just waiting to be uncovered. The first 24 hours after a storm are the golden window. There's also a sound to the mud. Yes, a sound. When you squeeze a handful and press it between your fingers, listen closely. If it snaps, it's dry. If it squishes too easily, it's too loose. But if you hear a thick, reluctant squelch, you've got the right consistency. That's where gold clings. You'll start recognizing patterns. River bends where gold accumulates. Small rock dams that trap heavies. Even tiny waterfalls that create natural sluices. With practice, the landscape becomes a code, and mud is your cipher. Remember, gold is heavy, secretive, and stubborn. It doesn't want to be found. It hides beneath layers of earth, under stones, behind silt. But it leaves clues. The way mud settles, the texture of the ground, the feel of resistance beneath your fingers. Old miners used to say, the mud speaks if you know how to listen. So bend your knees. Bury your hands and let the river teach you. In the grime and grit lies a story worth more than any map. And just when you think you found nothing, 
When your arms ache and the water's chilled your bones, that's when it happens. That tiny flicker, that glint so subtle it could be missed by anyone not trained by mud and time. Because this isn't a trick, it's an initiation. But what if the mud does more than just cover the gold? What if it actually helps reveal it? Now imagine this, you're in a place where the river bends around exposed bedrock. The water slows, eddies form, and a thin layer of reddish-brown mud pools at the edge. You scoop some of that muddy slurry, wash it gently in your pan, and there, glinting back like a secret, are streaks of fine powdery gold. Not flakes, not nuggets, but thousands of microscopic pieces that together weigh more than you might expect. This technique, while messy, is one of the oldest and most overlooked strategies used by traditional gold seekers. Flower gold is elusive, but over time it accumulates, especially behind riffles, in dead zones, or around natural rock obstructions where water loses force. In these spots, the gold settles into mud, protected from erosion and detection. Now let's connect the dots. When you approach a natural setting with a gold hunter's mindset, muddy areas that once seemed lifeless become the center of potential. Don't just look at gravel or big rocks. Analyze the color of the mud. Yellow clay suggests kaolinite, which often develops near quartz-rich hydrothermal zones. Blue-gray clay may mean volcanic ash layers or even oxidized basalt, another hot spot for mineralization. But there's one type of mud that trumps them all. Red ochre mud. It's packed with iron oxide, hematite, and limonite, two minerals closely tied to the geochemistry of gold transport. In environments where water leaches metals from underground, red iron mud is a reliable flag. Wherever you find it, especially downstream from quartz veins or faulted terrain, there's a higher chance that placer gold has piggybacked its way into the deposit. That's why old-timers often tested red mud first. Now let's take it further. Think about the role of mud during floods. In seasonal rivers, gold that's carried during flash floods tends to settle in slack water. And in many cases, slack water means thick, clotted mud. These spots trap fine particles with surprising efficiency, acting like natural sluice mats. This is the muddy trick most modern prospectors overlook. It's not about just walking up to a shiny rock and striking gold. It's about observing the slow geological ballet, how gravity, water, and erosion move mineral wealth from mountain to valley, from quartz vein to clay pan. Mud is more than a nuisance. It's a map in disguise. In fact, some prospectors in the American West created DIY gold recovery setups using nothing but buckets of mud and sunlight. They'd let the mud dry completely, then crush and sieve it, extracting visible flower gold with nothing but a magnet, a drop of water, and a hand lens. But it's not just about location. Timing matters too. After heavy rain, newly disturbed soil and erosion paths deliver fresh sediment into old creeks. That's when the muddy trick becomes most powerful. Gold that was once trapped high in bedrock now has a chance to ride down into surface level mud. If you arrive right after the storm, while the ground is still settling, you're often the first to touch what nature just uncovered. It's not a myth. It's timing, terrain, and tenacity. And there's a twist. In deeper jungle environments, like parts of Southeast Asia and the Congo, local miners track gold-rich mud by studying the behavior of animals. Certain birds, for example, are drawn to iron-rich soils for nesting or feeding. Where they dig, mud gets churned, and gold has been known to show up near their trails. Yes, even the birds can help you find gold, if you understand the muddy trick well enough. Now let's talk about extraction. Once you've located mud that may contain gold, the technique is simple but requires repetition. Wash small scoops at a time. Look for any black sands, shiny streaks, or strange metallic dust. Use your pan to concentrate. Use a magnet to remove iron filings. What's left may surprise you. Sometimes you'll find mercury-coated gold specks, which were deposited during old mining operations. Mercury binds with gold and settles in muddy zones. Other times you'll uncover pure natural dust, fine and yellow, resting in the last ripple of your pan. This method, while not glamorous, works. So next time you walk by a murky river bend or a dried up clay basin, don't just step over it. Kneel down, 
scoop it, read it like a geologist. That's where the muddy trick whispers its golden truth. Because where others see mess, you see a map. Where others see dirt, you see a deposit. And where the world thinks gold is gone, you remember what ancient prospectors always knew. Gold is patient. It waits in the mud. You just have to listen. This is EGS Pro, uncovering the secrets of gold hidden in plain sight. If you've learned something new today, don't forget to share, subscribe, and keep your eyes and hands on the ground. Your next golden discovery could be a single muddy scoop away.